No marriage is perfect. No. We say a marriage made in heaven. There was a marriage made in heaven. We speak of a marriage made in heaven. It's a metaphorical term. It's a hope. But there was one marriage actually made in heaven. And that was between the Prophet وسلم, and Zainab bint Jahsh radiallahu anha. And she would pride herself on that. She would say to the other wives, your families married you. Because Zainab radiallahu anha, her marriage was without nikah on earth and without mahr, a dowry and a ceremony. Allah azza wa jal married her as is mentioned in the Qur'an. فَلَمَّا قَضَى زَيْدٌ مِّنْهَا وَطَرًا زَوَّجْنَاكَهَا Allah says, we married you to her. So Zainab radiallahu anha used to say to the co-wives that your families married you off, but I, Allah married me in the heavens. By the declaration of the Qur'an. So for her, there was no nikah and there was no mahr. And she would pride herself on that. So that was truly, not metaphorically, truly and literally a marriage made in heaven. Yet what was the relationship of the wife, of the Prophet wasallam, in a marriage made in heaven? On one occasion, the Prophet wasallam, didn't speak to her for a very, very long time. Many, many days. And in one narration, up to two months, he expressed his displeasure to her. And she pleaded with him in every way, trying to appease him and placate him. Ultimately, the Prophet wasallam accepted. Zainab bin Tujahash radiallahu anha would argue with the other wives. There were two parties. And she was a leader of one party. And Aisha radiallahu anha says that she was my greatest rival. She was the one who would rival me with the Messenger of Allah. And they would argue in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Dishes would be thrown onto the floor, bowls would be broken, dust would be flung on each other. One, on one occasion, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came and the women were arguing amongst themselves and they began throwing dust on each other. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu quickly took hold of him and said, Ya Rasulullah, come and he took him away for Isha Salah. So he pulled him out of the house. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he secluded himself for a month, for up to a month. Why? There were so many incidents that had taken place. The Prophet was seriously contemplating divorcing all of his wives, including dissolving the marriage that was made in heaven. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, give them an ultimatum, give them a choice. And one of the reasons for him contemplating divorce, one of the issues was money, maintenance. The wives of the Prophet wasallam, as I mentioned earlier in the hadith of Abu Hurairah and from Bukhari, that initially the Prophet wasallam, did not have wealth. So he wasn't in a position to repay the debts of his followers. But once money did start coming in, instead of keeping it for himself, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever of the believers passes away and leaves behind a debt, then I shall pay for it. So initially, the wives understood that there was very little wealth. But once wealth started coming in, the wives made increasing demands of the Prophet ﷺ. And when I say demands, I must... We must be cautious about the understanding of the word demand, i.e. they did request this 
from the Prophet وسلم, and they kept on pressing him on it. But their demands weren't great. They weren't asking for luxury. They lived in simple homes. But they felt that they should have a greater share than their current share from the wealth that was coming to the Messenger And the Prophet وسلم, disapproved of that. So, amongst other things, this was one of the things that drove him to contemplating divorce and excluding himself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then told him, give them an ultimatum, give them a choice. And what was that choice? Listen to the words very carefully. You've heard this before, but there's an angle that I wish to explain to you, which is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ إِنْ كُنْتُنَّ تُرِدْنَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا فَتَعَالَيْنَ أُمَتِّعْكُنَّ وَأُسَرِّحْكُنَّ سَرَاحٍ جَمِيلًا Let's say to your wives, O Prophet, if you seek the worldly life and its beauty, then come. I shall give you some wealth, then I shall release you in a good way. وَإِن كُنْتُنَّ تُرِدْنَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And if you seek Allah and His Messenger فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَعَدَّ لِلْمُحْسِنَاتِ مِنْ كُنَّ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا But if you seek Allah and His Messenger then indeed Allah has prepared for those of you who do good and immense reward. Now look at the word. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say to him, tell the wives, if you want your husband back, if you want your husband back, if you want to remain with your husband, this was a separation for a month. And now you are being given an ultimatum, you are being given a choice. Do you want to continue in the marriage? Do you want to continue living with your husband? Do you want your husband back? Do you want your beloved back? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't use any of those phrases or terms. Allah's words were, وَإِن كُنْتُنَّ تُرِدْنَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ That if you seek Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was the ultimatum. So their choice wasn't between everything that they were demanding and their husband. No, the choice was you either continue demanding what you want. If that's what you want, we shall give it to you. Or we won't give you your husband. If you are seeking the alternative, that alternative is Allah and his messenger sallallahu this is why the wives of the Prophet وسلم, and who did they choose? They chose Allah and His Messenger وسلم. They saw the Prophet of Allah as a husband, yes, but more than a husband, they saw him as a messenger of Allah and they loved him as a messenger.